வணக்கம் ஹலோ ஃப்ரெண்ட்ஸ் இன் திஸ் எபிசோட் வி டெல்வ் பேக் இன் டு தி ஹிஸ்ட்ரி ஆஃப் தி ஏர்லி சோலாஸ் த நெக்ஸ்ட் இன் லைன் ஆஃப்டர் கரிகால பெருவழத்தான் தி செவன்த் ஜெனரேஷன் ஆஃப் தி ஏர்லி சோலாஸ் அக்கார்டிங் டு தி ஜீனியாலஜி டேபிள் கிவன் பை கே என் சிவராஜ பிள்ளை இன் ஹிஸ் குரோனாலஜி ஆஃப் தி ஏர்லி தமிழ்ஸ் Remember, we saw in the previous episode of how, towards the end of his rule, Karikala the Great shifted the Chola capital from Urandai, that is Urayur, to Kaveri Pumbattinam, that was a thriving trade port during his reign. When Karikala died, the old Chenni-Kirli rivalry seemed to have resurfaced, a rivalry that the military might and statesmanship of Karikala had kept in abeyance. Upon Karikala's demise, Chet Chenni Nalankirli took over the reigns of Puhar. Nedum Kirli, a contemporary prince from the Kirli line, staked his right to claim the throne of Urandai. He was the son of Velpahtadakai Piruviral Killi who ruled from Urande and this scion of the Killi line was the direct descendant of Titan who first captured Urande and established Chola rule he hence had a rightful claim to the throne so with both the princes equally poised to take over the seat of Urande an open war of succession broke out apparently Nedun Killi had seized the throne of Urande as indicated in the colophon to the Purana Nooru poem 45 sung by Kovur Kidar he records how Chetchenni Nalankirli laid siege to the town of Urande and attempted to retrieve the throne Kovur being a province in the erstwhile Tondai mandalam near today's Chengalpattu district Kidar meaning a landlord We do not know the real name of this Sangam poet as is the case with many of the poets and Kovur Kirar in this poem titled Thorpadu Num Kudiye It is your clan that loses makes an appeal to both the princes to stop this internal strife and save the honor and prestige of the Chola family The poem begins இரும்பனை வெந்தோடு மலைந்தோன் அல்லன் கருஞ்சினை வேம்பின் தெரியலோன் அல்லன் நின் கண்ணியும் ஆர்மிடைந்தன்றே நின்னோடு பொறுவோன் கண்ணியும் ஆர்மிடைந்தன்றே ஒருவீர் தோற்பினும் தோற்பது நும் குடியே ஓ கிங்ஸ் ஹீ ஹூ கான்ஃபரன்ஸ் யூ இன் பேட்டில் டஸ் நாட் வேர் த ஒயிட் ஃப்ளா ஆஃப் த பாம் நாட் டஸ் யூ வேர் அ கார்லண்ட் மேட் ஆஃப் த ஃப்ளார்ஸ் ஆஃப் த டார்க் பவுட் மார்கோசா யோர் கார்லண்ட் இஸ் அ ரீத் ஆஃப் ஆர் and so is his here the poet points out that the opposition is neither a chera ruler whose insignia is the palm flower nor a pandya ruler whose insignia is the margosa or neem flower and he continues iravir veral iyarkayum andre adanal kudi porul andru num seidi kodithir nummon anda vendarku meimali uvagai seiyum ivvihale In the nature of things it is impossible for both of you to win if either of you loses it is the house that loses your actions therefore forbode no good to your illustrious clan and this internal strife of yours will make the enemy kings who ride chariots with similar victorious flags to rejoice and make fun chechenni nalankirli was obviously irked by the transgressions of Nedunkirli as it was with several other kings of the Sangam era he was a cultivated man of literature himself and has two poems to his credit in Purana Nooru poem 73 titled Veerum Taruhuvan Chetchenni seems to give a fitting reply to Kovur Kirar and sings a vanjinam innadu pilaipin idu aahiyar ena tunnarum sirappin vanjinathanum goes tolhapiyam purathineyil sutram 19 where the ruler declares if i do not fulfill my vow may i attain this lowly state and the poem goes mella vandu en nalladi porundi eena irakkuvarayin seerudai murasigedu daayathu araso tanjam innuyirayinum kodukuven If he came and fell at my fine feet and pleaded with me I would give him the rights to my kingdom enabled by my honorable drums why I would even give my life innilathu aatal udaiyor aatal potradu 
என் உள்ளம் எள்ளிய மடவோன் தெல்லிதின் துஞ்சுபுலி இடறிய சிதடன் போல வீந்தனன் பெயர்தலோ அரிதே பட் தட் ஃபூல் who does not praise those with strength in this land and disrespects me like a blind man stumbling over a tiger that is clearly seen by others he will not be able to escape me if i do not advance and assault him and cause him distress like that caused by a thick long thorn stuck in the mighty feet of a bamboo eating elephant teedil nenjathu kaadal kolla பல்லிரும் கூந்தல் மகளிர் ஒல்லா முயக்கிடை குலைக என் தாரே மே மை காலன்ஸ் பி க்ரஷ்ட் இன் த எம்ப்ரேஸ் ஆஃப் தோஸ் டாக் ஹேட் விமென் ஹூ ஹேவ் நோ லவ் இன் தேர் ஹார்ட்ஸ் ஸோ நலம் கிள்ளி டிக்ளேர்ஸ் தட் இஃப் ஹி இஸ் அனேபிள் டு ஃபுல்ஃபில் ஹிஸ் வாவ் மே ஹி ஃபேஸ் த ஷேம் ஆஃப் பீங் எம்ப்ரேஸ்ட் பை ஹார்லாட்ஸ் ஸோ வி சி ஹியர் அ ஷிஃப்ட் இன் த எத்திக்கல் வேல்யூஸ் ஆஃப் கிங்ஷிப் a refinement or evolution in ideologies so to speak though eventually chetchenni nalamkilli ascended the throne of urande nedinkilli did not give up without a fight the rebel prince fled to another chola town called avur and occupied the fort and nalamkilli pursued him and besieged the fort for so long that the people and the army caught within the walls of the fortress suffered and this moved kovur kidar so much as to render a poem purananuru poem 44 addressed to nedunkilli wherein the poet beseeched nedunkilli to come out of the fort walls of avur and face nalamkilli or else surrender in order to put an end to the strife purananuru poem 44 begins irumpadi tholidiyodu perungayam padiya The war elephants have not been bathed nor have they been fed their diet of mashed rice with ghee they lean on their strong posts and with their strong trunks lying on the ground trumpet like thunder paalil kulavi alaravum magalir pooil varundalai mudippavum neeril vinai punai nallil inai koovu ketpavum innadu amma eenga inidu iruttal babies cry without milk the women have no flowers to wear on their hair and from within the walls of the finely built homes are heard the anguished cry of the people who have no water it is cruel for you to linger here tun arun tuppin vayaman thondral aravai ayin ninadu ena thirattal maravai ayin porodu thirattal o great one as strong as a lion If you are righteous open the gates of the fortress and surrender if you live by martial laws open the gates and fight here again we see the noble poet chastising nedunkilli in keeping with the bardic traditions of that time but the poet's advice seemed to have fallen on deaf ears and the enmity between nalamkilli and nedunkilli continued till the demise of nedunkilli at a place called kariyar whereupon he earned the epithet kariyattu tunjiya nedunkilli so chechenni nalamkilli fulfilling his vow seemed to enjoy complete hegemony over the whole of the tamil country as did his illustrious father karigala the great he was celebrated by four contemporary poets kovur kilar alattur kilar madalan madurai kumaranar of erichalur and mudugannan saathanar of urandai with over 14 poems half of which have been sung by kovur kilar praising the military exploits and courage of nalangilli one of kovur kilar's poems implies how even after gaining control nalangilli had to continuously wage war to regain his territories in the purananuru poem 31 titled vadanatar thungar the kings of the north do not sleep kovur kilar sings சிறப்புடை மரபிற் பொருளும் இன்பமும் அறத்து வழிபடுவோம் தோற்றம் போல இருகுடை பின்பட ஓங்கி ஒரு குடை உருகெழு மதியின் நிவந்து சேன் விழங்க நல்லிசை வேட்டம் வேண்டி வெல்போர் பாசறை அல்லது நீ ஒல்லாயே லைக் த கிரேட் ட்ரெடிஷன் வேர் வெல்த் அண்ட் பிளஷர் ஃபாலோ ரைட்டியஸ்னஸ் த பேரசால்ஸ் ஆஃப் தி சேரா அண்ட் த பாண்டியா ரூலர்ஸ் ஃபாலோ பிஹைண்ட் யோர் டால் பேரசால் தட் ஷைன்ஸ் அ லோன் லைக் த பிரைட் மோன் அண்ட் கிரேவிங் ஃபார் கிரேட் ஃபேம் யூ டு நாட் ரெஸ்ட் எனி வேர் அதர் தென் யோர் பேட்டில் கேம்ப்ஸ் வேர் விக்ட்ரீஸ் அ ஒன் 
Your elephants attack enemy forts, making their tusks blunt and are out of control. Your warriors, wearing victory anklets, the Veera Karal, desire battle and are willing to travel long distances at your behest. Afraid of you circling the earth, the kings of the northern countries are distressed, their hearts trembling and their eyes unable to sleep. In his history of the Tamils from the earliest times to 600 AD, P.T. Srinivasa Iyengar has this to say about the beautiful simile with which this poem opens. A simile used to explain how the parasols of the Chera and Pandya line following that of the Cholas is like how in matters of life where the three aspects Aram Purur Inbam meaning righteousness, material wealth and pleasure where Aram that is virtue always takes precedence over wealth and pleasure so the Chola parasol is given the first place and PTS has this to say and I quote this phrase shows that Aryan ideas were now rapidly gaining ground in Tamil India. Such a simile involving the Aryan concept of the objects of life and comparing concrete objects with abstract ideas cannot be discovered in Tamil literature before the times of Karigala. Nothing can be further from the truth as evidenced by the philosophies of life discussed in the Sangam poems themselves on top of which in the Tolha Piyam Purattina Eyal there is a tinei, a division that goes by the name kanji denoting impermanence where the sutiram goes kanji tane perundinai purane pangara sirappir panneriyanum nilla ulaham pulliya nerite dealing with the matters appealing to external life that is purattine eel kanji tinai defines impermanence or the transient nature of things under three heads irame nilayame the transience of youth Selvam Nilayame, the transience of wealth and Yake Nilayame, the transient nature of life itself explains Puliur Kesigan in his commentary. Puliur Kesigan's commentaries on the Ettittohe and Patupatu works and the Tolkapiyam in very simple language are a great guiding material for research students. So what would have made a renowned historian like PTS make this claim? First published in 1868, the book vibes with the thoughts that were widely prevalent during that time. Before it was established that Tamil was an independent language and the Tamil people had their own autochthonous culture steeped in antiquity, it was widely believed that Tamil came from Sanskrit and the Tamil people owed it to Vedic traditions for civilizing a tribal Tamil state. And the other beautiful poem of Chechenni, Purana Nuru poem 75, under a subdivision Mudumori Kanji that deals with ethics, material life and pleasure and the balance between these three stands testimony to the highly evolved intellectual state of affairs in that early Tamil society. The setting being the king's court a discussion seems to have ensued as to what constitutes a righteous rule. And the poem goes, Muttor Muttor Kutram Vitana, Paltharavanda Paraviral Dayam, Edina Mayin, Edinam Srapiana, Kudipurava Irakum Kuril Anme, Sirion Perina the Sirandandri Manne. If a small minded man who has received the sovereignty of his lineage, thanks to the demise of his ancestors and destiny passed on to him the benefits of their ancient victories where he lacks the manliness and implores his subjects into paying higher taxes his kingship indeed would be a burdensome one nalankirli continues but where the kingship represented by the faultless parasol held high as a mountain accompanied by victory drums is inherited by a superior ruler, one who faces battle with great bravery and effort and is just. His rule sits lightly on his subjects, as light as the roots of the netti that floats in a pond with scant water, not burdening but bringing comfort to his subjects. That is the true wealth of kings. This poem comments on how power may be conveyed by privilege of birth, at times on unqualified men. We see standing example of this today in our politics and here the person making the claim is the king himself. So both the poems of Nalankirli reflect an evolving ethical standard of a people where in the Purana Nuru poem 73, he considers it a shame 
to be found in the embrace of harlots, which itself is a shift in ethical standards of the time. In poem 75, the king sets a high benchmark for his own kind by implying that one who exploits his subjects is not a good ruler. Life in the times of this bygone era on Tamil soil is what should have inspired the likes of Thiruvalluvar, who probably took inspiration from Sangam poems. The 18 didactic works which go to form a part of the Sangam corpus, the Padanin Kir Kanaka Nulgar, time-wise came towards the end of the Sangam era. And in Kural 552, Valluvar says, Veluda Nindran Iduvendru Polum a king who tortures his subjects with excessive taxes is akin to a robber with a sharp spear who robs people at night. The conquering of the seven forts, the Yerail, is mentioned as the most significant victory of Nalam Kili and Kovur Kilar records this victory in a Puram poem. Purana Nuru poem 33 starts, Yerail kadavam yerindu kaikondu Nin pervai uluvai porikum atale, paduner vanji pada. You assaulted the gates of the seven forts, captured them, and inscribed your tiger emblem on them in the fine country of the Pandya king. The musicians sing praising your invasion. Here, K. N. Sivarajapule opines that the Yerail fort should have referred to the fortresses occupied by forest chieftains in lands that still lay between the Chola and Pandya territories and he also opines that this king's name should originally have been Chetchenni as he was a part of the Chenni lineage and later he should have added the term Nalam Kirli which means Good Kirli to his name putting an end to the internal squabbles and consolidating the two Chola lines. Indeed, the king seemed to have succeeded as the ancient distinctions of Chenni and Kirli line stand obliterated and it seems the hatchet was buried forever as we do not find it in the next generations. Upon the death of Chet Chenni Nalankirli, the poet Alathur Kirar sings a very moving tribute hailing from the town of Alathur and belonging to the Kirar family, again here too, we do not know the proper name of the poet. He sings Purana Nuru 225 that begins Talayor Nungin Tinjor Misaya, the beautiful translation given by Vaidehi Herbert, for which we are very thankful, making the Sangam poems accessible to a largely English audience. Look now, his land has become wasteland where Kalli and thorn bushes thrive. The right-walled conch shells with twisted mouths used to hang like the dangling nests of weaver birds in the palaces of kings unused for fear that Chetchenni Nalankilli might think that they were proclaiming victory along with drums if blown and attack them, ruining their strength. Now, even when I hear the conch shell sound at the gates of these kings who protect the earth, blown simply to wake them up, I suffer in pain as it reminds me that my king is no more. So here, Alatur Kira registers how, as long as Chetchenni was alive, the enemy kings had no use for blowing their conch shell for fear of attracting the wrath of the Chola king, who would think that they were blowing their victories and would immediately march on them and destroy their strength. So now that Chetchenni was no more, even though the conches were being blown simply to wake them up, it pained to hear the very sound of the conch registers the poet. Alatur Kirar also sings the praise of the next in line, the Chola king Kulamuttattu Tunjiya Killi Valavan, thereby coming across as an important link poet. We will continue exploring the Chola line in our next episode. Vanakkam.